What's up, y'all? Sparty here. I'm recording this on the Moto G7, so let me know how it looks, how it sounds, and all that stuff. But I want to finally do my review on the LG G8. If I remember correctly, I haven't even done that yet. <laughs> I've kind of forgotten, to be honest. I've been just having a good time just using the phone, so it kind of just slipped my mind, and it kind of just became part of my everyday life as using it. So as I can see, yeah, I haven't done a video on it. So let's talk about this here. Um, so LG has had an interesting year, to say the least. They released the LG G8 and the LG V50 at the same time, right? Or at least around the same time. They announced them at the same time. <laughs> There was the the LG G the LG G fifty V fifty which was a five G phone which is a five G phone and in certain markets has a has a dual screen case right in certain markets you can't get the dual screen case like in America you can't for the V fifty. But it was a 5G phone, but only on Sprint and Verizon. So then, LG released the G8X, which is a 4,000 milliamp hour 1080p display LG G8. But it has a more refined version of the dual screen case that does the same stuff, but doesn't have the pogo pins on that stuff so it is more marketable here and can actually be sold here <laughs> but those aren't the phones i'm talking about i want to talk about the g8 and this is a review and i want to talk mainly about how this phone has been working in my everyday life because i have been using this phone heavily <laughs> so I don't really want to read off specs because specs are kind of rudimentary to the overall phone experience. To be honest, they're kind of like every every flagship phone has a Snapdragon 855 or 855 plus nowadays. Every most flagships has six to eight gigabytes of RAM. Every flagship should have a base storage of 128 gigs or 256 if you're Samsung. <laughs> and mm, most flagships should have micro SD card support, if not UFS 3.0 storage, like the OnePlus 6T and the Note 10. So where does that leave the G8? It has, like I said, Snapdragon 855, 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, UFS 2.0 storage, but it has micro SD card support up to 2 terabytes. And I have a fa and I have a faster 400 gigabyte SD card in here. It's very fast and it works really well. <sighs> I honestly don't have any performance issues or any storage issues. I'm going to go into here right now and show you guys. Let me clear all this. As you guys can see, I'm only using 61% of my storage. I still have 50, roughly 50 gigs free. And that's actually really nice. I just installed Fortnite on here just to try it. And Epic, make this game, <laughs> make your freaking game. Play at 60 frames per second across every flagship. It doesn't make sense that it just plays at 30 frames per second. But I can kick up the resolution because it has a high resolution display. Do that, please. Thank you. Not that I'm really going to play it that much, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Don't have any sort of... Market don't have any sort of storage gremlins that I had on like the one plus six T where I constantly have to monitor the storage because it only has 
the base storage and no micro SD card slot. Don't have to worry. Ooh, ooh, ooh God, that, that hurt. <laughs> Don't have to worry about it on the Note 10 because that's 256 gigs of internal storage. So that's nice. But yeah, whatever. Storage is not anything to worry about on my G8 for me personally. But in terms of performance, don't have to worry about it with RAM either. Six gigabytes of RAM, I feel, is good enough. Eight gigs is a bit of overkill for a phone, to be honest. And 12 gigs, if you really want to do it, say for a gaming phone and stuff like that, like the ROG phone or the Razer phone or the Black Magic 3 or something like that, it's really nice for those. But for a regular phone, that's not really necessary, <laughs> to be honest. So let me go down my likes and dislikes with this phone. I talked too long just rambling, so let's get into this. What I really like about this phone, I'm going to just do dislikes first, actually. Which there are very few. The... In display speaker, while it's nice and it actually doesn't hinder, it doesn't really hinder how well this speaker sounds on here. I would much rather just have a dedicated speaker right there. Because compared to like the V40, these spe the speaker is kind of like not as loud. Definitely not as loud as the G7. Not as loud as the, not as loud as the V40. But it's good enough, and it is definitely stereo speakers. But it sounds a bit tinny and muffled because it's under a display. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, LG has never really been great at selfie cameras, and I don't use selfie cameras, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But for a lot of people, it is. So, the 8 megapixel camera on here is serviceable, and they've definitely gotten better, but it's not something that I would say is it's not something that I would say is a like for me. I would much rather just use the main sensor on the back or even the wide sensor on the back. And that really does help with this, you know, this platinum gray finish because it's kind of like a mirror. So you, you can definitely see yourself there. But if you have a case, that doesn't really matter. So there we go with that. <laughs> um, this phone really feels very nice and hefty as well. That's something that I do like. What I really don't care for, which, you know, is beating a dead horse at this point, preaching to the choir. I don't care for glass-on-glass -glass construction. It's not premium to me. Bring me back. <laughs> Speak of the devil. This construction. The LG V10. Bring this back. Or... I have two V20, sorry. Bring this back. <laughs> Bring constructions back that are actually... This still has a mil standard 810G, but that actually I can trust with being durable. I, get, I can't trust glass with being durable. My G7, I dropped plenty of times, and it didn't crack. It got dense, but it didn't crack. The moment I let my friend get it, Right. <laughs> the, the front, the screen is cracked and the back is cracked, right? Glass is very inconsistent. And plus, it doesn't hold up over time. So that's something that you definitely have to, you know, look out for. <laughs> but yeah, glass is not the way to go. Please, LG, go back to aluminum or something. I don't know. Or at least, I wouldn't say I have the option or at least with one of the one of your flagships, like say the V series, just go back to aluminum, please. Like I'm, I'm tired of this. Like I'm tired of every, having to put a case on every phone. I'm just tired of it. But yeah, whatever. Um, the battery life could be better, but that's not really something that I dislike because the battery life is really good on this. Anyway, so that's not something that I would say is necessarily a dislike. Battery life could always be better. So that's kind of a moot point. What do I not, what else do I not like? 
I guess I would have liked for the wide angle to be wider. LG was the first to put a 120 degree wide angle lens on phones. So it would be nice if I would have what the V20 used to have. And I know the G8X has a 133 degree wide angle lens on the back. So that's actually nice as well. But this is only 90 degree. It's still wide. It's still plenty wide. But it's just something that I don't necessarily think is that big of a deal. Especially when I have a Note 10 that has 120 degree wide angle lens. So yeah. That's all I really want to say on that. It's not necessarily the hugest point because it's still a high quality wide angle lens. But it's just something I wanted to bring up. <sighs> okay. Likes. <laughs> Where to go with this? I like the feel in the hand. It's a really thick, it's a chunky phone, but it's not too chunky. It's hefty, but it's not too hefty. It's premium, but it doesn't feel like, say, the Note 10, where if I drop this, or if I ding it like I just did right there, I feel like it's just gonna crack. It's just gonna break. I don't feel that with the I don't feel that with the G8. It feels substantial. It feels nice. Mel Standard A10G is a nice touch LG. Please keep doing that. <laughs> the headphone I'm gonna get to that later. But the 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 sole fact that it's hard to get on camera especially with this glare, but the camera is flush with the back. That's a nice touch. There's a lot of good things about this phone that nobody talks about because, oh, the, 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 the gestures, you know, something that you could turn off and never use. And no, that doesn't make the time of flight and dot sensor useless because you get really good facial recognition. You guys could be able to tell because, as you guys can see, no notifications come up. I look at it, you see notifications. Really good face facial recognition. The only real problem with the facial recognition is that, like the Google Pixel 4, I don't know why I said the whole name, like the Pixel 4, you could unlock it with your, eye, with your eyes closed. But that's really the only problem. You can unlock it in pitch black, <laughs> like you can on the iPhone. You could unlock it barely even looking at it. Like, I could probably, I could put it like right here and it might scan my face. Okay, no. Like, slight, like, hold on. I could probably put it like slightly facing me. No, nah, I won't do that. There's too much crap in the way. But, but you get my point. I could barely look at it and it'll scan my face. <sighs> um... The OLED display on here is phenomenal. It's a really good display. The phone really feels compact. It doesn't feel like I'm using well to be and to be fair, I do have giant hands, so your mileage may vary on that if you have smaller hands, but this feels like a really compact phone. I don't feel like I have to do too many hand gymnastics to use the phone and that's something that's really nice <laughs> and since it was released alongside the the v50 this is basically a smaller v50 even though they have miss miss mitch mix mismatched like you know features and stuff like i said the the v50 is 5g and it has the dual screen this has the crystal OLED display and it has a display, it has a speaker under the display and all that stuff. It only has dual cameras while the V50 has three cameras, stuff like that. But there's also the G8S, which has the three cameras. Um, but where they match, they match the features that matter. Sorry, I had to cough, but they match the features that matter. A quad HD display, a quad HD OLED display. Both of them have that. Um, they both have the same 
audio capabilities. They have the same video capabilities. The only real difference is that one is a bigger phone and one is a smaller phone. One has a bigger battery, one has a smaller battery. One has better cooling because it's a bigger phone. And one has slightly less better cooling because it's a smaller phone. Like This still has thermal cooling in it. And it stays relatively cool. <laughs> the OnePlus 6T feels like a furnace <laughs> after using it for quite a bit of time like playing heavy games and stuff like that. This doesn't feel like that. It gets warm, but it doesn't get super hot. Um, What else? The quad DAC on here. <laughs> what else can you, what else can I really say? Right. The quad DAC on here is really nothing to scoff at it's nothing to it's nothing to say is what am I trying to say it's nothing there's no competition is what I'm trying there's no competition you put it against the v20 it trumps the v20 you put it against the v30 trumps the v30 you put it against the v40 slightly better than the v40 the only one that's equal is the one it came the one it came out alongside and that's the v50 right no matter which lg phone you get and i'm not saying that this makes this obsolete or even makes the v10 obsolete in terms of audio but there's a clear difference in improvements and i would definitely say if you want a compact phone go with go with the g8 right um but with that being said that's nothing i really want to spend too much time on headphone jack really convenient not this bluetooth crap <laughs> i'm just kidding bluetooth is convenient in its own right and i do like bluetooth for what I use it for. So that's not really something I would say is terrible. Um, fast charging is fast enough. There are times where it'll be like adaptive charging. And that typically happens for me personally when I'm like using a charger it's probably not used to. Or I'm putting it on the charger, say it's on 20%. And I just get off of playing a game or something. But you could toggle it. You could literally toggle it. I don't really have a um a good way to show this. But it'll come up in the fast in the notification will come up saying adaptive charging. You can expand the notification and it'll say switch to fast charging. It'll switch to fast charging. And it's quite a bit of a difference too. It'll go from like an hour and 48 minutes of fast charging from 20% to like an hour and one minute or something like that of fast charging. So you get quite a bit of a difference in charging speeds in that case. <laughs> but yeah, that's really, that's a really nice touch as well. Um, gaming on this phone is actually really good. Like it's, it's obviously not going to be an ROG phone. It's not going to be like the other two gaming phones. I mentioned, mentioned the Razer and the Blackmagic. It's not going to be those, but it's really good. It's really good. I load something like Marvel Contest of Champions, right? And the moment it loads, I'll show you guys. And I'll even compare it to the Note 10 right here. I'll do this in the bed. I'll do this in its own dedicated video, but I want to show you guys here. So, look at this character model right here, right? You guys probably can't tell because it's on video, but this moves at 60 frames per second, or at least at a faster frame rate than it does on any of my other phones. <laughs> I go to Champions right here. I go to one of the more like. I go to a I go to a character that has more animations, right? <laughs> like Symbiote Supreme right here. And its cape flows. That's definitely 60 frames per second right there. 
the cape definitely flows at a faster frame rate right here. But as I'll show y'all right here, once this loads up, <coughs> and it's not just all right there in some menus, it's actually like that in gameplay too. I'm just not trying to make this a super long video, and I'll do that in its own dedicated video. But I go into Champions, I go back to Symbiote Supreme, and as you guys can probably see, that runs choppier. <laughs> That runs choppier. And I do have all the settings maxed out. I have it to where it's at high frame rate and high graphics and stuff like that. That's not even a real thing. It might be because it's a regular Note 10. Who knows? But it also does that on my OnePlus 6T. And I kind of want to test. I kind of want to test it on, say, my V20. Because I want to see if the V20 does something similar. I'm getting a lot of notifications, but I ain't going to do that right now. But yeah, where where did I put it? It's right here. The G8 is good for gaming. Is it the best? No, it's probably not going to be the best. You, you'll probably want a phone with better battery life and more RAM and stuff like that, right? But it's good enough if you just want to play a game quick and just do it for like say an hour or something i know that's not quick but time goes fast when you're having fun so you know whatever it's good for emulators it's good for all that stuff as most things are these days so just keep that in mind um if you game and i'll do a separate video on gaming but um, the cameras the cameras on this are really good lg has really improved its auto mode it's been a really it's been, it's been a hell of a, like, thing with LG as of late to see their auto mode. Because a lot of people are like, oh, the colors and stuff like that. But the blues here are very representative of what it is. There's not a lot of fringing on the Hard Rock logo right there. Um... I take a picture of a TV and the character model doesn't look doesn't look like, you know, there aren't scan lines or anything like that. And there's a lot of detail where it says brutality and Sindel wins. There's nothing really bad about that. It looks really nice. And another thing, the only place where you can really see, like, you know, smearing is maybe right here where the the heart currency is and it's kind of smudgy but you know whatever um you take a picture like this or something and it's gonna be hard to show on a phone recording with a phone but there's a good amount of bokeh there's a good amount of detail on the can itself and that's something that's really nice um I've shown you guys plenty of pictures on my cat, so I'm going to just not do that. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry. You take a picture like this, right? And there's a good amount of... The, the phone I'm using probably isn't going to do a great job, but you get a good amount of detail on the street and a good amount of picture in the detailing the clouds and stuff like that looks really nice looks really crisp stuff like that good amount of saturation doesn't oversaturate or overexpose like say samsung phones tend to do even though in this recent update my note 10 has been doing way better in terms of that but yeah i do want to bring that up um it's been doing really nice in terms of that battery life i'll say has been really good as well it's been there's a 3,400 milliamp hour battery in here, and I listen to podcasts or even listen to music during my shift at work, nine at night to six in the morning, and I'll probably be on, I'll be, I'll be on 100% when I get to work, and I'll be probably on 75 to 72% when I get off of work. 
And that's really nice. That's a really good amount of like, there's a really good amount of battery life to still have left after work, especially when you're using your phone, right? <laughs> especially while streaming through Bluetooth and all that stuff as well. So that's a really nice thing and a really nice thing to have when it comes to battery life. Call quality is good. Um, with the in-display speaker, you'd think it'd be a little bit more muffled, but it's actually not that bad. It's actually still pretty clear, and you can still hear and stuff like that. It doesn't really have the problem that the V40 had, where the V40, and I think also the V50 has that sort of offset, off-center um, receiver, <laughs> so... You kind of have to position your ear and your phone on your face in a certain way. You don't have to do that on the G8 because the whole top, the whole top half of the screen is a spe has a speaker under it. So yeah, that's actually really nice as well. In terms of like speaker quality while lit watching YouTube videos, it depends on how the audio is mixed, but it actually sounds really nice. The boom box plus the stereo speakers is a really nice combo. And I hope when they do like other phones where they're not using this like in display, this in display speaker, they tune it to where the speaker, the top speaker is really loud and very clear and not distorted and stuff like that. Like the Note 10 speakers, like I said, are really good. But the problem is that one is clearly louder than the other. And you can hear that sometimes. <laughs> um, but the haptics on here as well are at also really good top in line. They're probably, they'll probably go for me, LG, Apple, and Samsung <laughs> in terms of like haptics. Those are the top three for me personally. I haven't tested Huawei. I haven't tested all these other phones yet. But, and I haven't tested the OnePlus 7 Pro to see how much the haptics are improved on there. I've heard they are they are improved because they said they put a better haptic motor in there. But, you know, whatever. I got to test that myself to see what, they, what it actually is. But, yeah, um, really good haptics. Nothing that I would say. You don't notice it until you go to another phone. And that's what, like, say I go back to a V20. Haptics on here are really spongy, <laughs> and, and it feels a bit weird, but yeah. Um, what would I say the final verdict is on the V, the V, god dang it, G8, the LG G8, thank you. What would I say about this phone? If you want a phone that's small and that gives you the flagship punch, that gives you, it's basically a content creator's companion. You get a t you get the top of the line headphone jack and a phone. You get a good amount of camera, good a lot of camera features. You get a really good manual mode. Only really only really LG and Sony are doing true pro grade manual video controls in their camera apps, and that's really something that's really nice. Um, <laughs> and you get just a lot of like stuff like you get the HD audio, you get your HD recorder app, which you can record podcasts on, you can record, you can record, you know, music tracks on and stuff like that. Just get the vocals for that on there. And it's really good. There's stuff like that. That's really nice. And that's really convenient for content creators that I would definitely say people need to try out. But Especially now, the G8, you could probably get used for like $200, $300. I got this for, I think, $250. So that was a steal. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of the LG G8 below. Do you have a G8? Do you have a G8X? Which phone do you have? Just let me know in the comment section below. Ask questions. See, ask more questions to see what exactly, if this phone is good for you to speak you know, change into if you want to and stuff like that. This is Spartan. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday.
whatever time of day it is in your area. Like the video if you like it, dislike it. If you dislike it, share with people that are interested in the sort of content. I really do appreciate the support. What am I at? 677 subscribers? Let me just double check here. 679 subscribers. So that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one, you guys. I really do appreciate it.